So one topic of conversation that is really starting to heat up now is the potential price point between PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. This was sprung forward even more by the live stream Jeff Keighley did for Bonus Round, where he was talking to Wedbush Morgan security analyst Michael Pachter and the former Xbox and EA executive Peter Moore. And they were theorizing that Microsoft has the potential to undercut Sony in terms of a price point with their big balance sheet. Now, I think there's a lot more to be said on this topic and how these manufacturers could price these machines holiday 2020. So let's go over that. So to start off the conversation, let's actually talk about what was said during the live stream. I'm going to read a few quotes for you here. Uh, this one first from Michael Pactor. He states, Microsoft has a big balance sheet. If they want to cut the price by $100 and subsidize the first $10 million, they will. So I think they're waiting to have Sony blink first, and then they'll reveal the price and launch date. It's going to be holiday 2020, so very likely in November and very likely $400. Then we have Peter Moore. He follows in with, both companies are considering how much we can afford to lose in the first 12 to 18 months and how that is offset by software attach rate and services revenue. From the perspective of each company, Microsoft right now, the stock price and market cap is flying for them. Does Satya Nadella say, this is our opportunity, let's dare Sony to come in at $500. Now I know a lot of people are very lukewarm on Michael Pachter for a lot of his more outlandish predictions throughout the years and how he often misses the mark a lot with Peter Moore's assessment and uh, Michael Pactor's, they're not exactly wrong in terms of their assessment. However, I disagree a bit in terms of Microsoft actually undercutting Sony and for a few reasons, but we're really going to dive into this conversation because let's look at the timeline here. Now we had a report from Bloomberg in February. That was our first initial report from Bloomberg. And then there was one a few months later, basically reiterating the fact that uh, what they're hearing, they have sources uh, very close to, to the matter stating that Sony is having trouble sourcing parts, that the uh, price to actually build this machine is getting a little bit too high for them and that they're struggling to keep the price down. But the first report made a point to say that Sony is doing a wait and see approach to see how Microsoft might price their machine and that would give them a little bit more legroom in terms of how they want to price their box. We also have a situation where Mark Cerny, the PS5 architect on record has already stated the price of PlayStation 5 will be appealing given its advanced feature set, kind of lending to the fact that this machine might be a little bit higher than what uh, consumers have come to expect with PlayStation, at least within this previous outgoing console generation where PS4 comes out at 400, then drops the price with a slim model. PS4 Pro comes in, still retaining $400 with increased performance. So there's already a slight inkling there that we're gonna get a box that's a bit more expensive. Then we go over to the Xbox side of things and we have Xbox head Phil Spencer going on record this past April to state, I feel good about the price we're going to be able to get to. I feel good about the price and the performance capabilities that we have for Series X. I feel incredibly strong about the overall package. He then goes on further to state, I believe we have a plan that can win. Now we have to go execute and then elaborating further that for Xbox Series X's price, they have to stay agile. So certainly also hinting at the fact that the company is willing to take a loss if need be, which echoes the statements that we read earlier from Peter Moore and uh, Michael Pachter. This is very typical in the console industry. So if you don't know when a brand new uh, console generation comes, the manufacturer is very willing to take a loss on selling the hardware in order to sell a lot of software. Now, having said that, it's a lot different today than what it was, say, 15 plus years ago on more primitive platforms where there was just software sales and uh, peripherals, accessories, controllers, you know, the things that you kind of expect, but that's really all those machines could, could do. Now the manufacturers are looking at uh, revenue from online storefronts, DLC, uh, subscription-based services, not just from theirs, but other ones that are offered on their platform. It's a massive amount of cash flow. And we have examples where one fiscal year of PlayStation 4 profit exceeded the entire generation of PlayStation 2's profit, which you may think is ridiculous and insane, but that really is the case. And that's really what's taking place. PlayStation 2, despite being the most successful video game console ever with over 150 million units sold worldwide, a boatload of software, it was just not, it's not nearly as much as what consoles like PlayStation 4, Xbox One, even Switch, these machines have online connectivity and they generate revenue through way beyond just your standard software sale at a brick and mortar retailer, right? So given the circumstances of today's climate with selling a console, it is easily argued that both Sony and Microsoft could take a loss more than what we normally see. I mean, one of our big outliers is PlayStation 3, where Sony sold the consoles at over a $200 loss. And that was a bit of an outlier given that they sold it at 600, which was still incredibly expensive to most consumers back then. 
there's a lot of weight carried into this. It's still, it's still not as easy to say, well, here's where they make all this money. Uh, they could get an early lead, this and that. There's still heavy implications here where one minor component of uh, manufacturing the system could cost the company upwards of a billion dollars throughout the life cycle of the generation. Some people still miss that. Yes, they're getting bulk prices as in they're spending, you know, upwards of pennies, cents to a dollar for certain components and that makes these very affordable to manufacture and that's how they offer them at say a 400 to 500 dollar price point but it's still very very important that they think carefully on these decisions when actually creating these boxes actually here's a clip from develop 2014 with uh, ps4 architect mark cerny and also former sony computer entertainment president and ceo andrew house discussing building playstation 4 more or less and talking about weighing out the pros and cons of what components to put in and keep out of playstation 4. Like, you know, you decided to include a, a, hard, a hard drive in every PS4. So, so why, was that a, why was that a point of debate? It's a point of debate because it's about a billion dollars. Right. Unfortunately, it's very expensive. We made the commitment to go with GDDR5, it was very, which is more expensive mm. than basic DRAM to begin with. It. So it was going to be very expensive to go from four to eight. We were balancing priorities uh, at this point. And, um, you know, a lot of the philosophy that, that underpinned PlayStation 4 uh, did, you know, very frankly come uh, out of our experiences on PlayStation 3. <laughs> more than a billion, if you do the math, yeah. for the hard drive, and more than a billion for the GDDR5, and it was pretty obvious to me that something was going to have to give. So all things considered, and even taking into account what Phil Spencer had said, where is the Series X price really going to fall? Is the company going to be willing to take that much of a loss on their hardware to price it around, say, as low as $400, which really would shock me if that were the price point that they somehow got to. That would be tough. However, in the more unconventional sense, they will take a loss in that this thing is going to have a very good value proposition when it launches holiday 2020, mostly because of Game Pass. I mean, this is in their playbook. It's been in their strategy for the past few years now. We know how aggressive they've been getting with Game Pass. I really wish I could see the real spreadsheet here of Game Pass's numbers not just in terms of subscriptions, we know that they just recently hit 10 million subscribers, which is substantial. That's very good across Xbox and PC, over 10 million. I mean, that's they're really grinding out the numbers hard here to get people on the service, and they've done some amazing deals where they've ran it for a dollar entry fee, and some people have been able to stack that for three years of Game Pass. And when Series X launches holiday 2020, you know, they're going to offer a month or something of it free. And we already know that they're going to be launching Halo Infinite on it. I mean, most of their developers are pretty much going to be releasing on Game Pass day and date. That is what they're doing moving forward. And how can you not, as a consumer, love that? I mean, that already off the jump is such an incredible value. And I will also probably argue that won't be the case for PlayStation Now on PlayStation 5. I mean, I, you know, it's a thing where... I would like Sony to get more aggressive with it, but this is also a circumstance where people like to compare PS Now versus uh, Game Pass. And I've gone on record to say, you really can't compare the two. One of them's 200 some odd games that are download only. The other one is 800 some odd games that are mostly streaming and uh, PlayStation 3 games with like 200 some odd PS4 titles that are downloadable, but you'll never get Sony's major IP day and date on PS Now. Not gonna happen. They can release those $60 budget big budget video games and they're gonna sell five, 10 million some odd units. That's the Sony strategy. Doesn't seem as though that's gonna change at all whatsoever. They've been very vocal about doing major cinematic storytelling experiences, and they're gonna release those as premium $60 titles first and foremost, which tells you that PlayStation Now is going to stay where it is, this kind of weird, you know, optional service that Sony's not gonna really push towards consumers. I'd like them to have a larger presence there, but that probably, it seems like it isn't gonna be the case. Our last numbers for PS Now, is in October, where they crossed over a million subscribers. And before then it was 700,000, where they quoted around 40 to 50% of uh, an annual year over year increase in subscriptions, which is incredible growth, but it's a million from October. And I can guarantee you they're not even remotely close to 10 million uh, on Game Pass, right? So again, not easily compared, but people are just gonna look at that anyway. And uh, it's just not what Sony's really putting a lot of stock into nowadays. So uh, they'll do, probably something with PlayStation Plus, right? You know, you're gonna get a few months of PlayStation Plus for free, and uh, you know, they'll probably have one game or two PS5 games on PS Plus, but 
will probably be one or two smaller scale titles. Again, that's just looking at history with what they did on PlayStation 4. Um, they could do something entirely different, but if you want to go by what they've done previously, you can't expect them to be able to offer the same kind of value that Series X might offer day one. But this is just kind of going into the fact that both these machines are probably still going to be 500 some odd dollars, and the real losses will not only be on the hardware front, but also in terms of offering a few months free and also the Microsoft side of things where they're just basically handing out all these Game Pass games uh, for free just with that subscription. And of course this all really complicates matters with Lockhart, a machine that we don't know about just yet, a rumored entry next gen Xbox, uh, which is, you would imagine, uh, much more affordable in the price range of 400 to 350 maybe lower but that would be shocking uh, but obviously it's going to be an entry box and we don't know where that's going to fit into their strategy just yet but obviously if they've got a entry point box that'll be much more mass market then uh, it might not make a whole lot of sense to lose well over 150 200 on selling a series x right that wouldn't make much sense um, so if it's already planned to be a low volume machine you know that that complicates that complicates the conversation even more but uh yeah these machines are probably given what they're doing these consoles are in theory a very good very good price to performance ratio now that we have the spec sheet uh if they come out at 500 i mean you you can't argue with what these things are doing so between sony and microsoft I don't think this is going to get as exciting as people are hoping for where it sounds like they're both being very reactionary and surely this is the one area where they do have a little bit of steer right they can't change their boxes but they can just change their msrp and take losses where need be but i don't think it's going to be as crazy as some are expecting uh, i think they both have price targets in mind i think they're just going to announce them and i think they're going to be so similar that you're not going to see them adju adjusted uh if anything a 50 dollars price deficit 100 would be i think more surprising but even then you know 100 to 100 and whoever chooses that um is definitely making a bold statement but it doesn't seem like one console or the other is really going to take that that leap of faith because both machines uh, will be very expensive expensive to manufacture. There's still this expectation that Sony's should be cheaper. That SSD alone is definitely driving up the price of that machine. Also, um, the 3D audio that they're doing, again, it just depends on where they price out their components. Um, so this doesn't mean PS5 is not cheap to manufacture. It's gonna be expensive just like uh, Series X. So I still think they're probably gonna both be in five the $500 neighborhood, uh, give or take 50 bucks, but you know, We'll see. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, of course, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can and should follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.